Hi, Loy. Hi, Aditya. Welcome to Sudhi Audio's channel. Welcome and uh, welcome to my home, my abode, where I live. Thank you so much. And thank you for uh, interviewing me. My pleasure. Uh, please share with us your music journey, how you started off, your background. Your Great. Uh, first of all, I'd like to mention that uh, I have had no formal training at all. No formal training no in music? No formal training at all. Uh, in fact, if you call 10 uh, sessions of guitar learning, then I guess that's the 10 sessions that I've had. And that too in my formative years, uh, when I was in the 9th, and then the 10th comes up and everybody has to go back to studies, and uh, the same way it happened here. So, uh, that's it. That's about it. But uh, there is this little um, trip that I get when I'm in front of people, when I'm performing. So, that's my nasha. Uh, since the age of five, I've been on, on, on the stage. I come from a Mallu background. I'm a Malayali. No music. No background. music. Uh, Mallu Catholics are slightly orthodox about certain things. Their kids are going to be born in and, and straight away go into either banking, engineering, doctor, either that. That's, there's no other ways. And dad owned a small scale industry. Um, they used to manufacture water heaters. So obviously, I thought I'll end up there. I, I, I myself never knew. I thought even when I'm on the uh, when I'm performing or whatever whatever I was doing it was like a pastime. But somehow that nasha that is there on the stage that when you when you see the crowd when you enter the stage people expecting something of you and then finally when you deliver the ah oh he's delivered it finally and the applause or the standing ovation then great amazing and uh, that's what kind of always was inside. I was, I loved performing, whether it be uh, acting, plays, uh, singing, or mimicries and what not. Just to do everything. What, what age did you realize? Uh, ah, that that when I finally came into college is when I actually realized that maybe there's something more than than what I'm doing. Maybe I should push it. But I guess my learning disabilities um, kind of pushed me away from taking training as such. But uh, in ninth, a friend of mine started learning the guitar when I was uh, in the ninth standard and I said, I need to do that. Let's, let's, let's do that. And I picked up the guitar, I begged my dad, please, please let me, please let me learn the guitar. And he said, yeah, okay, cool. And he gifted me a guitar. I'm really, really happy. He doesn't know how, how important that moment was. I know how important that moment. The guitar in my hand and I was, I was a rock star in the world. Uh, I had no uh, actual influences, but um, indirect influences were a lot. I used to, we, we never had like big music players and since we didn't have a musical background, we didn't even listen to music as, as a habit uh, in the house. It was just because somebody else heard it, we would play it in our national Panasonic mono player and that, that was my world, that mono player. Uncles coming from Dubai would bring me ABBA and Bonnie M and uh, Beatles and Steve Wonder and somehow that was my western influence uh, on the other hand from my childhood I've been listening to all kind of music on Doordarshan and on radio Doordarshan played Marathi film that's where my Marathi thing comes from people wonder you're a, not a Marathi or you're, you're a Malayali how the hell do you compose for Marathi films uh, for those who don't know I compose for Marathi films uh, and Somehow the best of me has come out because of this gift of hearing, of listening and understanding nuances not only and, and respecting nuances more than understanding nuances uh, that if I don't get it then I'll make sure I get it and then I go ahead with it. So understanding nuances of language, of the, of the culture, of folk, of, of whatever, wherever it comes, whatever I'm attempting to do and I like to attempt various various things. So DD provided me with Marathi music and S.D. Burman and R.D. Burmans and everybody were my gurus. Um, how did I get my Hindi? Was uh, the, the famous ghazal writers in the world have just freely given it to me because I heard them, I listened to them and sort of got those nuances right and managed to throw it across. Here I am uh, in, the, in the 12th when I finally win some college competition and say, hey man, I like this, I, I want to continue this, how do I do this? So as slowly, slowly I went into some small little band, I don't even remember the name of the band, um, and we 
just jam for the heck sake, heck of it. Just, 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 just do it. Rodas Blues and the usual covers. It was a raging success at that time. When I finished college, a couple of friends of mine, Alan Kundra, I'd like to mention him, amazing keyboardist, amazing pianist, best producer, uh, arranger that I've ever heard. Uh, sadly, I've not heard him lately, I've not seen him lately, but he, Alan Kundar and JD, bass guitarist JD. Three of us formed a band called Alloy. Funny name, yeah, we didn't think it was funny. Uh, and uh, we used to do, ha, huh, this is a very good thing. We used to just sing songs and compose songs. We recorded at Showbiz Vadala. That's been the birthplace for a lot of musicians of our time. Um, Gogi and his father, Nandi Dugal, uh, both have helped us uh, to uh, so many musicians to you know form their music. So uh, there we started composing some tracks, writing tracks. I started writing then. I didn't even know uh, whether I could, but somehow just it just fell. Uh, and I'm I'm an average student, so English songs was what we were writing at that time. Hindi slowly came later. Uh, so you mean your own lyrics? Yeah, my own lyrics. I started writing lyrics to it and singing. Um, and there's so many interlinked uh, topics here, but I'll get to slightly uh, an easier topic. That finally, when we got together and made this little demo tape of ours, what I don't know what we exactly wanted to do. Maybe perform live. Or, uh, I'm not sure what it was, but there were ballads and slightly rock pop kind of a situation. And I uh, we went to places. We went to meet Louis Banks, and Louis Banks loved one of our songs at that time. So I like this particular song. I think it was Our World or some some song like that. Um, and he, he was very interested in it and he said nice nice very nice song and that was a good Louis Banks saying wow and me JD and Alan were like yeah yeah we, we've got something um, next step was this guy in an ad agency his name is Manjunath Hegde and he said why don't you guys do jingles so I said what's jingles so, jingles jingles man I said, I said oh what so he says ads you do radio oh that's what's called jingles okay cool let's do jingles and uh, our first uh, attempt was Complan Mango Shaker and it was very good, I can tell you that. Uh, do, you <laughs> remember, do you remember that <laughs> yeah. tune? Yeah. Shake it away, shake it away, shake it, something, 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 something like that. I don't know what it was. It was some red hot chili pepper kind of attempt. Um, and finally... And were, uh, you, were you paid? Uh, yeah, we were just 5,000 rupees or 2,000 rupees just for the heck of making so it happen. Just tell me, I mean you just said you finished college and... Was there no pressure from home that aren't you supposed to take care of my factory? Yeah, it was. So what I used to actually do was 3 hours, 4 hours in the morning I'd go there and then the whole day is mine. So I'd be like the, the uh, pune over there opening it up, cleaning the entire place, making sure when dad arrives everything is, all the workers are there, making sure uh, that I, uh, show, I show him the, the master and everybody is there and everybody is signed in. So you did manage? I did, just just a little bit. I, I'm not too proud about that. It was just for namesake. So that particular part gets over and I'm straight off to Alan's place or JD's so place. So did money worry you because you were young? You must be having a girlfriend. I, mm, yeah, I did have a girlfriend and who's now my wife. Uh, but uh, it was never a, a problem. I, I, I don't know, I never had this thing Basically, I think many people in living in, born and brought up in Bombay are slightly uh, loose about the need to earn and make their livelihood. And I, I didn't have many needs and such like that. I was cool. Whatever happens, we'll do with what we have. So little, little things that we did, performances, 200, 300, 5,000 bucks, whatever whatever it came in our hands was wow, great. So and we, what did you do with that money? Did you um, buy No, it? I didn't invest. <laughs> I'm again uh, very very bad at that particular part. But yes, we re-put it back whenever we needed to do some recording or whenever we needed. So we needed some little cash and that came through. Jingles went on for like uh, four, three, four years, three years with Alan and uh, JD and it kind of dissolved, frizzled as many other things have. Then I was solo for a long time. Uh, many jingles like Coke, uh, Fanta, uh, and uh, Killer Jeans, Lawman Jeans. Killer Jeans was one of the uh, very important uh, turning point in our life because just before that, I would just wanted to get myself shaped up. So I joined up XIC, uh, Xavier's Institute of Communication for Advertising and Marketing. 
that's when I started figuring out, I'd already started doing jingles then. But why? How? I just got a kind of a bone structure of the entire thing and it helped as we went on. The moment I finished it, Killer Jeans was one of the jingles. I remember, he rides alone through the distant land. Da -da 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 so that particular um, jingle was written by me and that was like, oh, I got paid for it for a, as a writer, as a jingle writer. Uh, and uh, we, Alan, me and JD had composed a track and it was a good, good thing and in fact I remember waiting on the, waiting for it to appear on the FM, it's coming today, so we like, playing the whole day, the, 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 the radio will be on, when I wouldn't be listening to the radio otherwise, but we'll be sitting, listening to the FM, oh it didn't come today, boss it didn't appear man, what happened, no, 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 no. there was some goof up, it'll come tomorrow, three, four days we actually, went. and the day it happened, he was so thrilled. It was the same, in fact, it was the same night Bon Jovi came uh, over here and he was doing his practice in, in, in uh, Andheri Sports Complex. I remember that really clearly. We were at uh, uh, where Barista is now at the corner. That's where we were. Amazing time, amazing moment. We were like, yes, we got it. And um, one jingle properly playing. Otherwise, it was here, there, small, little. This was really famous, really strong. It catapulted us for all the other things. We, uh, my love for theatre, film, uh, serials got me and certain friends in my group, they got me close to uh, serials, this entire serial business and we got into background music, we got into uh, uh, those title songs, at that time the title songs were really important, now they just come as little blips, mm -hmm. at that time the whole song used to play and then the serial uh, episode would begin, uh, here, uh, uh, so we had a lot of opportunities then. And that was a good point for me because then I started connecting more and more with the medium uh, of how they actually go about it. So my forte being composing melodies. It was always like I, I had this knack of getting a melody right. So the song, you just sing the song that would happen. Um, again, my drawback is uh, my production and my, my, my arrangement. So for that, I had Alan at that time. In fact, like I said, where my formal training stopped, my informal training actually was on continuously. People like Alan and JD, they, are mu they were really strong, they are really strong musicians. They've come from proper formal training. Each of them has, like if, I, if I'm not wrong, JD was a violinist first, then a pianist and then uh, a bass guitarist. So... Uh, he was also my senior in school. Oh, <laughs> great. Awesome, awesome. So, and Alan, though, his mom was my te French teacher in school as well as a music teacher. So, uh, he was com strong, very strong in, in, in keyboards and piano, piano actually. So, uh, watching them play in front of me, those were my actual training moments. Um, then there was Sudhir Thomas who used to play the guitar. Then there was uh, Siddharth Achrekar who used to, I used to just watch some small, small little nuances. Oh, you can play and over here also? Oh, okay. So, how do you interact with these musicians? Now, like today, there are many musicians who maybe go to a class, learn how to play a guitar and all. Correct. Like you gave these names. Some of them were your friends. Correct. Or in college. Correct. Not everybody gets an opportunity to collaborate with others. Correct. But how did you manage to meet these new musicians? Did you go to concerts every night or? I didn't go to concerts every night. But um, whenever there was a moment, whenever there's a chance, I'd be just throwing my vo voice. In fact, I'm not that great a vocalist, but I I have a certain um, I have a certain voice. Uh, I, I'm sure I, I'm not uh, sure how to put it, but I'm sure you'll understand when I do sing. I have a certain energy. So what I used to do was, whenever there was a little jam up, anything, I do and make my presence felt. Uh, many people feel ashamed or uh, shy slightly or shy or no, I don't know how he's going to feel and what not, what how they're going to react. Just damn it, do it. So I was, I am kind of bold. I was never sh the shy kind. Um, so I just used to go and sing it loud. The, the reason that I would not have would not be chosen in certain places was because I did not have a signature that kind of a voice. Like at that time, it was required to have a certain kind of a voice, and I didn't have that voice. Mine was I don't know what between every damn thing. Uh, and uh, yeah, but that got me to meet people and then we we were like me and Alan and JD were a band 
so we would get a guitarist in that guitarist would be like uh, kalyan uh, barua amazing i mean <laughs> what do i have to say so again there was my reaction interaction so even if you even if you're half sure of what you do of what little you can do which was again my uh, situation then <coughs> just throw that little half what you have just throw it onto the crowd basically it's the confidence you should have yeah, on, on it, yourself at least that little half if in your mind if you're saying oh i can only do this just do that just do that then people will automatically say at least he can do this let's just try it out man suppose your main vocalist in fact it's happened to me <laughs> good um, one of the just when i was i think um, yeah i was just in college i think just about the end final year of college uh, bcom by the way can't remember what i studied but uh, yeah there was this band called le roth um, seriously the anger is what it may, means but i didn't see much but these guys were performing and their main vocalist fell ill and the usual story who's a vocal who's a, somebody just said ah, i think it was jd who said uh, when we check loy out and somebody said yeah 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 loy and i went and did my first show in bhaidas mm-hmm. proper like oh shucks it was good and yeah the, then onwards like there was always that's like it's these kind of situation that even if you half sung and somebody's heard that little laugh and say right now what to do nobody is going to come this vocal is going to charge you this vocal is going to charge you this guy at least come for free if not anything else come on so these are situations where you can actually uh, and go for jams that's the best thing you hear there's a jam happening just go and do whatever you do it will actually get even if you're not uh, chosen or not selected at least you'll get to understand how these people actually function how what is it that ticks these musicians till date i've never completely understood it but <coughs> wow i mean when you see musicians like vivek rajgopalan uh, jam and uh, ashish oh i've got to come to ashish this now collaboration talking of collaborations ashish uh, was my junior in school ashish rego and i've always known him as a very formal violinist he is a violinist by the way awesome violinist uh, i don't know how many of you know it but it's awesome violinist he played for a certain song that i sang and i said who's this what is it wow it was like real vivaldi kind of chak 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 kind of violin playing i was like who's this who's this player and my friend says this is ashish i said ashish we go oh and then somehow we met and it was slowly slowly and i at that time punit sira uh, gave me this movie uh, i proud to be indian um, and my first bollywood film first and only bollywood film um, i've done some films before to sai pranch pe is bhagobhut but those were small bannered films as, as such for the cfsi film so when i went for that i said i need a very strong team around me so i got ashish rego and i got vivek rajgopal ashish rego uh, handled the main programming uh, and arranging section and, and vivek handled the rhythm section at that time he was still not into producing and arranging and stuff but he these two guys together produced the track and it was awesome there was um i am i dhruv ganekar played the guitar for that i was like wow i mean he just returned i think berkeley i think he was in berkeley for some time and he just returned and i was lucky to have a move and he played some deadly lines on that uh, if ever you get to listen to that track i thought of indian few people have seen it and i wished many would have seen but there were there were these little hidden gems that i thrown through uh, and following that ashish me and vivek off and on kept working together like um, ashish and i got together to make this film pak 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 which was a marathi film along with gautam zoglekar and uh, during that ashish and i have we won the state award for that film we won eight or nine state awards for that mm-hmm. particular film mm-hmm. thank you uh, and it was quite an achievement it was our first marathi film and how we going to do it was a little question in our head gautam zoglekar was our marathi influence he with his mother sai branch pe father arun zoglekar comes with a whole large history uh, in film making brought us close to uh, the story very close to the story i was actually half screen playing that uh, film also 
and why so i was in it i could understand okay this the, here comes my second forte which is also my first forte my first earlier that i mentioned that i composed melodies my second forte was to understand what exactly that movement required sometimes there are moments where i even uh, had discussions with the director saying i know you're saying a to me but don't you think that b is also working because that's what your film requires and both of us kind of yeah it does and when i make sense i don't argue but when i make sense by performing that track then they oh yeah this sounds correct this sounds good so in this case gautam joglekar doesn't like a straight song this is fun he likes every time there has to be a change in your verse in your chorus the chorus remaining the same verse changing it doesn't like a stagnant song so this movie pakpak pak, pak, really uh, got us into composition mode and plus how do we get what do we get so i've been listening to um, uh, the marathi tracks to marathi tracks since i was a kid dancing in during ganpati and uh, what whatever festival is there i would uh, join in and um, so the general as i understood there was one song that from my childhood i always um, liked but i couldn't actually um, remember it so i went about searching and i finally found it it's called a dhangar geet dhangar meaning shepherd so uh, their song and it's a beautiful uh, i can't sing the lyrics properly but ai baja zuga gali da 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 dhangarachi mendar ha dhangarachi mend so that the kunch kunch the kunch kunch the kunch kunch has got a nice little uh, rhythm and a flow to it so i like that I, i i wanted to emulate that not copy it emulate it somewhere or the other in my songs it appears not just the dhangari many such folk songs i love folk songs sometimes is why uh, composing i also feel that i'm a bard <coughs> that i like to um, howl out my songs like i like to throw my songs across rather than just softly put it in and just listen to it no poof it's i think i love doing that and i somehow um, uh, enjoy folk music to the core more than more than anything else so here we are we i've collaborated with uh, ashish rego as a comp- music composer uh, not just him doing stuff but he, both of us doing it together it was amazing slowly as i started uh, moving on with my second marathi film third marathi film fourth marathi film, during the first marathi film itself i think vivek uh, introduced me to um, sanjay divecha and sanjay divecha was uh, getting a, an album ready and he says lo i'd like you to do this i've heard some songs that you uh, played to vivek and vivek's been talking about it so how about we do it and here comes this melody that is as he said i i said that i never composed for anybody but i'd love to do that and the way i like to do it is if you got your music right sort of ready and you got a melody sing it just hum it however you feel it and send it across so he would if you know sanjay divecha then you know how he'd be singing a melody he'd be, pa pa ri ra ra ri ra ra he does that kind of thing so i got that and i created palke palko pe over there it so you wrote the lyrics yeah i wrote the lyrics for palke palko pe uh, for the album uh, full circle followed by one more song in the same album nano se palke palko was sung by uh, uh, kunal ganjawala and nano se was sung by uh, kailash khair both excellent tracks and i just loved the way they gave me he gave me the freedom take your time don't worry and i and i really juiced those words out and i if you ever hear the song um, i think it's it's on the net it's on youtube uh, that's where my professional uh, writer for songs loy came up and went on and went on and wrote some one song for mukul dogre wrote some songs for vivek uh, rajgopalan and the in, fact in hindi in hindi in hindi oh yeah in hindi i've i've become a hindi songwriter more than any anything else now that's another thing i used to actually almost fail in hindi in school i have not dared i just went to school for some reason and I didn't dare tell my hindi teacher that i write hindi lyrics i'm sure you immediately have a heart attack you will like, alloy nahi kabhi nahi 
and uh, so it just went on uh, this this thing the fact that i come from a musical background make as an a musical uh, as a musician as a composer makes it much more easier for me to write songs because i understand meter i understand um, like i said uh, values of uh, of how what language you want to use i write only in hindi and english as of right now i don't write in marathi or malayalam also but i do uh, supervise the malayalam writing uh, in fact i made my mom write a song for sanjay devecha also in malayalam mom writes in malayalam uh, so here comes the part where finally these elements in me came together and sort of uh, support each each uh, profession uh, sorry each art more than profession uh, as a composer my lyricist will help me every now and then as a as a lyricist my composer helps me so each of them keep helping each other and, and as as and when we are moving we finally reach to this point where i meet uh, a really good musician again through vivek uh, his name is uh, shri shri electric fame uh, and we uh, got together and started working for some time actually wanted to do something made some small small little samples they were working but still wasn't on a pro- on something that we could sell as as of right now which in the back projects is going to come out someday finally a project called L- life of pi came in shri's hand and she said lord you got to be with me on this project this is the platter that i have created and he had created this mesmeric flute piece that flute piece and the trailer that i saw triggered numerous words in my head numerous more than words uh, numerous paths in my head I, was, i could go this way i could go this way i could go this way anywhere i wanted to go and i said i was like on high on coffee type kind of buzz it's like give me a day please can i it's like, yeah 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 so Chill. what did he want you to do in that he wanted me to write the lyrics and compose the melody the which is what you've melody. done for the song which manzil you, manzil correct and manzil was born i hate calling it manzil because i both of us like to call it burger uh, there was this entire argument uh, at sony and at uh, fox saying nobody knows what a burger is they'll find out if they don't know what a burger is burger by the way is a banana tree okay uh, and it's a really an enormous tree has so many beautiful stories around it you sit underneath a burger and you'll understand why the song came out and how it came out is uh, says how do what do we write about it says let's write about a journey So yeah, let's write about a journey. The film is about a journey. It's about getting stuck somewhere, but getting stuck somewhere and moving from one place to another. So we wrote a song, the melody as well as the lyrics. So it's a songwriter, Bala Chakkar. But uh, it talked about you sitting underneath a tree and just traveling the whole world, not moving actually, but just traveling the whole world. So uh, and not wondering whether where you're going to reach. but the entire journey the journey where you see beautiful things around just notice every, th- that's the entire song and then uh, you finally reaching a destination doesn't matter because you've already traveled the whole world sitting underneath the tree in fact let me just strum it a little sure. bit छाओं से नमकी हवाओं पे बगुलों के पंख लेके दुनिया की सैर पे निकले हजारों में कश्ती किनारों से मंजिल तो काहे ढूंढे हो जाओ तुम नजारों में when does one hear this song in the movie uh, case... nobody hears it in the film sadly it is a promo and a trailer track oh. uh, it was supposed to be the end title track but somehow some some goof up on somebody's part it but it is there on the album it's there on i don't know it's there on the album but it's there everywhere in on the net it's That's... available in stores yeah it's available on itunes that i know for sure so it's available on digital stores on digital stores yes it's available and i'm really it was one of those moments that make I want to tell you tell this to all the artists over there. These are the moments that make you feel why you were born. You were born to be a 
musician, you want to be an art, writer, a lyricist, singer. That moment when you know what you've done is God. You say it, I mean, you, normally everybody says, wow, God, that's what it is. Bhargat for me, at that moment for me, and, and for Shri, I'm sure, was that moment because we, every time we played it, uh, we would have goosebumps. And we were like, yeah, this is it, this is it. So, Bhargat was, was something where I co collaborated happily and marvelously with this uh, gentleman called Shri. He's, it's where both of us gave our best and we were comfortable with whatever he gave and whatever I gave. And nobody had any qualms because everybody gave their best. And it was it. And another world was created. That's why I am what I am. And it took me so much time to realize that, by the way. It wasn't till lately, till when Bhargad happened and some songs before, that you realize, oh yeah, this is what I was born for. This is what I should be doing. There are moments for us where six months, seven months, there is, there is no job as such. And you're like, shucks, man, bank is dwindling. Everybody's bills are piling. How do you do it? Just stick to your guns and do what you do every day. Even if you've not been paid for it, just sit at home, compose, write, what do you write? But just keep doing it. So one fine day you'll have a pile of something or a pile of shit, whatever, if I'm allowed to say that. But yeah, uh, you'll have a pile of something in your hand and you'll say, what did I do? I did this page and this page was good enough from the whole pile. It's, it's believe in yourself. People say that again and again, but it's hard to uh, actually uh, go by it. But when these moments happen, yes, this then you feel, ah, yes, I've, I've arrived, arrived, not financially maybe, but arrived as, a, as an artist. That's what I'd like to say to all musicians, all artists out there. Thanks, that's wonderful.